Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard a lot of different stories about his work ethic and his uh, professional uh, standards. Uh, mm-hmm. So so can you share shed a little light on on what it was like in uh, the time that you spent with uh, with his band? Sure. Uh, well, so I was hired, offered uh, the gig by a friend of mine, uh, Phil Lasker. Phil's also a trumpet player, um, great writer. Uh, and at the time, uh, again, right, like when we when we always talk about like uh, y- you never know who you're going to meet, what it's going to lead to. Right, it's just whatever can happen at any time. So, um, so this my friend Phil, uh, he had recently moved to New York, uh, and he ended up getting an apartment ten blocks south of where I live. And uh, I get an email from him, uh, and we were hooked up by my friend Michael League, who's the uh, leader of Snarky Puppy. Yeah. And, I don't know, so Mike gives him my number, Phil calls me, and I just started, like, I would walk 10 blocks down and, you know, do, like, in, in-home in recording things for him. And uh, been like, this was going on for, like, a year and a half. And then he's like, hey, man, so I just got a call from friends. And I just started laughing because I knew he was serious. But, like, the way he said it, I could tell it was, like, he thought he was being punked or something, right? You know, so right, right. he's like, anyway, he wants me to put together a horn section. Uh, do you think he'd be in, be into it? I'm like, I'm gonna guess on this. Uh, that's a firm yes. Yeah. So we go out there, and the first time we go out to Minnesota is, is where I'm from. Chan Hassan uh, is where uh, Paisley Park is, and so we're staying in the hotel, literally two stoplights down from Paisley Park. Uh, we thought we were just going to be there for a few days. We ended up being there for a month, just rehearsing. And uh, it was, I, I have to say, um, it was great, but it was a very different experience than what I'm used to. Um, not only from growing up in Philly, but living in New York my entire adult life. Uh, it wasn't the hey cats like set up here's the charts let's play it was like let's let's feel this out hey give me some horn lines and then like so um phil uh would write uh was the primary writer for the horn section and it was 11 horns it was four trumpets two bones and five saxons uh a lot of horns which is awesome uh and this trombone player from Nashville, Roy Ag, wonderful musician, and one of the busiest guys down there, and a dear friend. Uh, Roy also wrote, and I wrote some too. Uh, but we would, you know, we just uh, Prince would just be like, "Hey, let's try this." Okay, you know what? No, let's try this. Hey, let's try this. And it was so it was very much experimental, which of course I'm open to. But when you're dealing with 11 horns and one, two, three, four, and six rhythm, we're talking about, you know, a lot of things that need to be altered if we're saying, let's just experiment because eventually we have to get the stuff set. Um, that was not, right? I'm, I'm used to the New York studio scene or whatever, right? You just show up and like, here's the charts, rehearse it, run it down once and then record. This was new for me, and I will admit that I I needed to take a few timeouts for myself because I was ready to lose it on people a few times because I just wanted to say, stop, we're off on four, this is happening, this is happening, and we're moving on. But that was not, you know, uh, <laughs> the general vibe of the band, but Quite frankly, I really appreciate them because they helped me to see this other side. But Prince, personally, um, and we did have you know interactions a lot, right? Because we just he was always there. Like um, 
he wouldn't stick around for an entire rehearsal, maybe. But um, like he he'd listen and he'd say, Yeah, I'm gonna go have some lunch, I'll be right back. You know, and then an hour later he'd come back and listen to what whatever changes he wanted and we'd play him and there'd be interaction. But him and I had a uh, an interesting beginning to our relationship because when I showed up at the time, um, nice. God bless New York City. And I think I think uh, it's the Prince Police coming to get you. So, uh, um, the time I was, I mean, in addition, to, so I'm, I'm I'm playing lead at the Vanguard. I'm playing lead in the Burnland Big Band. I was playing uh, first trumpet in the Broadway show Porgy and Bess when that came back with Audrey McDonald. But, you know, it's like I'm working and I'm doing recording dates and blah, blah, blah. So in the back of my mind, those first couple of weeks, I was like, man, I don't need this gig. You know what I mean? Even though I was honored to be there, I'm like, this is getting weird. And what's going on with this? Or what's going on with the money? Or what's going on with how long we're here? You know, because I was still having to deal with my life in New York. Um, but one day we're just at rehearsal and this is what chilled me out. Prince is the one who chilled me out. And this was like the beginning of our humorous kind of relationship. It's just, I guess he felt this energy from me that like, I was feeling like that. And he walks over, he goes, Nick, what's up? How you doing? He goes, I'm fine. I'm asking you what's up. <laughs> and I go, I said, oh, you know, like, right. Just trying to, Nothing. Everything's. And he goes, man, trust me, stick with it. This is going to be good. And that's all he said. He just walked away. And that was like our first actual intimate interaction. Just the two of us. And I went, I don't know. It was just like, it was like something about the way he said it. I just went, all right, I'm sticking around. It's going to be good. And, you know, fast forward all the years and great gigs and people and just everything. Um, but he, yeah, he was really deep. And right. We always, when we think about these artists, right. We always just, you get to see the flashy side. The, the, the what I w would call like, you know, the BS, the, the phony, not that it's phony, certainly not. I don't mean his performances or his music. I just mean the people just assume they're a certain way. And my man would like show up and like some crazy ass looking like uh, outfit and like flip flops that with three inch heels. And then like, <laughs> you know, come here something. Be like, all right, that's cool. Hey guys, uh, we're going to take dinner now. Uh, let's go to this restaurant. And he would take 23 people out and we'd go to some random sushi restaurant and dinner was three and a half hours. Oh. And then he's like, let's go back and rehearse. And you're like, sir, it's um, it's 11:45 p.m. Are you? Sure? He's like, yeah, let's go back. Okay. And then we would rehearse until like four in the morning. Yeah. But it was, it was organic. It, it mm -hmm. didn't feel weird. So I really credit him that first moment he gave me, and I, 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 I think or rather maybe I should say I know, he he knew what he was doing. He was feeling some energy from me and he just chilled it out because he could see in the rehearsals, again, right, being the, I was the lead player. Like, so I was like trying to corral 11 cats from like seven different states. You know, like everybody lives everywhere. So like we weren't used to being with each other and playing with each other and having the same kind of phrasing. So I had to really corral and make sure we were a unit. And that was stressing me out. And I think, man, he just read it and he chilled me right out. It was great. Yeah. You know, and that, that's really, I mean, that's a great sign of, of a, of a leader, uh, you know, whether it's the leader of a band, lead trumpet player, uh, you know, leader of a, of an organization, uh, a, a parent of uh, being able to sense when when others are having difficulties 
and you know you, you you can see it you can sense it uh the tone of the voice the body language things like that and to be able to step in and not like you know smack them upside the head but basically just kind of give them that nudge that they need to just get themselves yeah. re-centered <laughs>